welcome to What Am I Rolling, a twice monthly RPG one shot podcast hosted by me, Fiona. This week, I'm joined by my friends Tim, Alistair, Ben, Josh, and Kylie from the Dunking on the DM podcast for Paranoia, a dystopian science fiction tabletop role playing game. First published in 1984, Paranoia is set in the dystopian future city of Alpha Complex, controlled by Friend Computer and where information, including the game's rules, are restricted by colour-coded security clearances. Player characters are clone enforcers of the computer's authority, known as troubleshooters, and will be given missions to seek out and eliminate threats to the computer's control. However, things aren't what they seem in Alpha Complex, and, well, clones are replaceable. In this one shot, we'll be using the latest rules of Paranoia at time of recording, which are the Red Clearance Edition rule set, published by Mongoose Publishing in 2017. Typically, after we recorded this, there was an announcement saying that there would be a new edition of Paranoia released within the next year. Paranoia, the perfect edition. It's always the way, isn't it? I'm sure we'll try out that edition in another one shot, but just for clarity, in this particular one, we're using the Red Clearance Edition rule set. You can find out more about Paranoia and get your own copy of whichever version is available on the Mongoose Publishing website. That's mongoosepublishing.com. I'll add links to it on the What Am I Rolling website and in this episode show notes. This episode's guests are from Dunking on the DM, where comedy and storytelling collide in one actual play tabletop RPG podcast. They have two ongoing campaigns, one using the 5th edition rule set and the other the Degenesis system. They also do the occasional one-shot using different RPG systems. I recently guested on their show for a Troika one-shot, which was very fun and my first ever experience of that RPG. Would definitely play Troika again, by the way. So check them out. Donkey and the DM podcast can be found wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, here is your spoiler warning alert for the introductory mission, Your Security Clearance is Not High Enough for the title of this adventure, because that is the mission we are playing through in this one-shot. If you're planning on playing this mission through as a troubleshooter at any point in the near future, stop now and come back when you or one of your clones is ready. So here's an incredibly brief overview about how Paranoia Red Clearance Edition works. Troubleshooters have four core abilities known as stats. These are violence, brains, mechanics, and chutzpah. These will have a numeric range between one and four, and essentially, the higher these stats are, the better. As well as stats, troubleshooters also have 12 skills which handle the different areas of expertise. These are athletics, guns, melee, throw, science, psychology, bureaucracy, alpha complex, bluff, charm, intimidate, stealth, operate, engineer, program, and demolitions. Because Paranoia encourages collaborative group character creation, each troubleshooter character begins the game with a unique skill set. They will have five skills rated from one to five, indicating things that they are good at. At the same time, they will also have five anti-skills rated from minus one to minus five for things that they are bad at. Troubleshooters also have access to something called Moxie, an indication of how in control their current clone version is and represents their high stress levels. A high Moxie indicates an unflappable, calm state of mind, you know, grace under pressure. A low Moxie means jumping at loud noises state of mind, grace hiding under a table. Troubleshooters can spend Moxie to help them get extra dice on any roll, at a conversion rate of one Moxie point per die, or spend one point of Moxie to re-roll their whole dice pool. Moxie can also be used to activate mutant powers if a troubleshooter has them, but shh, we don't talk about mutants or traitors in front of friend computer. Troubleshooters will automatically lose Moxie if they roll a 6 on the computer dice, more on that in a moment, or if they experience upsetting visuals, substances or experiences during their mission. If a troubleshooter loses all their Moxie, they lose it. Freak out big time. The only way to recover from losing it is to get Moxie points back, and the most efficient way to do that is to get a fresh clone. Read into that what you will. Sometimes this is the kind of solution, but it's also the quickest. Troubleshooters normally start the game with 8 Moxie points and 6 clones. However, some of these points and clones can be traded in order to boost some of the player's stats and skills in character creation. Whilst we didn't record character creation for this one, as it would have taken up a whole episode in itself, I would highly recommend checking it out as a process in the Red Clearance Player's Handbook. It's really, really fun. I really enjoyed it. Every 
every time a troubleshooter wants to do something, or the GM asks them to do a thing, they must add a stat and a skill together along with any other modifications. This can come from action cards, equipment, support or assist from other troubleshooters, behaving smartly, etc. And this will create their node dice number. That's number of dice, dice number. The troubleshooter must then roll a number of d6s equal to their node plus the computer dice, which is another d6. They must always roll the computer dice no matter what, even if their node is zero or less, which I'll come to in a second. Each dice that shows a five or a six is a success and adds one point to the troubleshooter's final total. This is then compared to the difficulty number set by the GM for the task. Essentially, the more successes a troubleshooter gets, the more likely they are to achieve their goal. Now, it is possible for troubleshooters to have negative nodes, as they may be asked to mix and match a whole range of stats and skills which don't normally go together. In these cases, the troubleshooter must treat the negative number as a positive one and roll that many dice plus computer dice. However, any dice which doesn't show a 5 or a 6, so shows a 1, 2, 3 or 4, will subtract the total number of successes. Yeah, totally cruel, I know. If the computer dice shows a 6, troubleshooters will lose a point of moxie as they've attracted the attention of friend computer during a stressful situation and things are about to get non-standard. There are other rules regarding character creation, combat and mutant powers which we don't have time to go into here. However, I can recommend checking out the Red Clearance Edition box for Paranoia because the writing is incredibly funny and straightforward and it really places you at Alpha Complex in the setting. I particularly love the player's handbook, I just thought that was really cool and an easy way to get into the game. So if you're interested in Paranoia and the Perfect Edition isn't out just yet, I'd go and check out the Red Clearance Edition. One last thing before we begin, naturally there are times in this one shot where the players and myself, mostly myself, get the rules wrong or forget something plot-wise. Whilst we always endeavour to stick to the rules wherever possible, at the end of the day, we all make mistakes. And what matters most is that everyone enjoys themselves. And with all that out of the way, let's get back to Alpha Complex. Welcome to Paranoia. Thank you so much for taking the time with, to, I guess, play this game with me, play this game against each other, play this game against me i don't know it's a it's an interesting one so we'll just go for it there and as i said, I said before like it feels very improv it feels very competitive at times if you have a thought in your head go i want to do this just do it don't worry about the consequences because we will deal with that and everyone will remember it because they will come back for it. so any anytime you're like i'm not so sure just do it and we'll resolve the consequences of it i love not worrying about consequences yeah exactly of my day <laughs> right exactly well he, well guess what your day is about to get a lot better so, you all come to consciousness. You open your eyes, and although you know you've never been here before, you somehow know where it is. An infrared clearance cloning and briefing room for new citizens of Alpha Complex. White, tiled, clean, a bit chilly, and empty apart from other people here and a neat line of black uniforms hanging on a peg along one wall. And security cameras for, you know, your security. There are other people here too. Like you, they are slightly damp, rather confused, and very naked. Well, quite naked. Strategic locations on their bodies appear to be hidden by a cloud of pixelization. So, you realise as you glance down, are yours. Names float in the air above their heads. They are, and we'll go around in order. So we're going to go Tim, Josh, Kylie... Alistair and Ben, just say what your designation number is. So that would be your name, security clearance, home sector, which is currently question mark, and the clone number. Um, so what, what's your first name, Tim? Bridget. Bridget. So it'd be Bridget Infra, and then question mark, and I believe it's clone one. Can you describe what Bridget looks like to us, please? Um, she is about five foot four. She is about 70 years old and has white hair, fairly short white hair. All right, Josh, what is your, what's your character's first name? My character's name is Jeff Infra, question mark one. Is this Jeff with a J or is it G-E-O-F? This is J-E-F-F. -F. 
the right spelling. I agree. Um, mm. What is what does Jeff look like then? Jeff very much looks like the sort of person that would be home in a nondescript black uniform. He is of average height and average build, with a very unassuming three all over haircut. <laughs> Is this just like a Lego person? <laughs> Ima- yes, if a Lego person could be translated into the real world, <laughs> that is what Jeff is. The only thing that is slightly different is that there's a little bit of grey creeping through in, in the uh, roots of his hair, belying that he's a little, perhaps a little older than he looks, but because he does look so generic, it's quite difficult to pinpoint exactly how old he is. I like the idea that that's, he's the sort of person that if you type into eye stock man comes up mm. all of his, all his images are <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah a hundred percent yeah yeah <laughs> all right kylie can you what's the first name of your character uh frog, frog. so i don't clone number two clone number two so that's frog infra question mark two what does frog look like so she's about five foot, very skinny, has some bulging eyes that are slightly disconcerting, and she seems very twitchy. Love it. What a what a rag bag team of troubleshooters we have today. Okay, Alistair, what's the uh, what's the name of your character? So, uh, Valis the Fourth, I think, is perhaps Valis around infra question mark fourth. All right. He looks around. 40 years old, he's pretty plump, um, permanently smiling uh, in a kind of <laughs> unnerving way. Uh, but the energy of, of his eyes don't really match the smile. And he has like a grey mop of hair uh, sprouting from the top of his head. Fantastic. And last but by no means least, Ben. What's the name of your character? Uh, Peter Infra, question mark, number three. He is about five foot ten. A little, mm-hmm. little taller than average. Mousy brown hair that um, wafts in the non-existent breeze. He has quite a large bushy beard that appears to be uncombed and unkempt, um, and tortoiseshell glasses that uh, are perched on his nose. And if you look carefully, very carefully, you can see they've been held together with bright red ele- electrical tape. Oh. Oh, has somehow survived the cloning process. But yes, maybe maybe you realise they're actually fused to your face. Excellent. They are. They are part of him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my. Oh, that's a story for another time. Okay. <laughs> so, greetings, new citizens. The voice issues from hidden speakers about the room. Welcome to your first day in Alpha Complex. Any previous days in Alpha Complex you may recall are pseudo memories uploaded to your brain lobes to aid orientation and to minimise psychotic instances in fresh clones. As citizens of Alpha Complex, you are now valued members of our great community. You will be given roles and tasks, some simple and some perilous, and your contributions will be rewarded with... And there's a massive explosion. It sort of drowns out the voice, and the room shakes slightly. An alarm goes off in the distance for a couple of seconds before it cuts out. And as you sort of all sort of looking around seeing where everything comes, a small chunk of the ceiling sort of falls and crashes onto a scrub bot, a small cleaning robot that's been sitting silently in one of the corners next to a stack of mops. You just hear it all much it, as it sort of gets hit. Then there's a brief silence, and in front of all of five of you, some words form in the air. Please stand by. A moment later, two more words appear. The door. What would you like to do? Peter will go and check on poor Scrubbot, see if anything can be done to save this precious part of a friendly computer. Going over it, you can see this massive tile. Uh, essentially, you can see it. It's on it. It's almost like branded in the little tiny bits of it as Syncrete. So it's like some sort of synthetic concrete, and it's pretty much pierced all the way through Scrubbot, who is sort of screaming like a, a high pitched sort of whine, like like that high, um, with the cogs underneath like whirling around it it looks pretty well te- the sort of term would be fucked um <laughs> pretty much scrub bot no <laughs> as, as a perpetually untidy man I, I think only peter truly appreciates the work the hard work that scrub bot goes through 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, you can see where almost like a, a, a gam, uh, what are they called? Yeah, zambonis. Uh, it's clearly been cleaning this room mm. and it's just got to the end of its cycle. Like, you know, ah, I've done and then been crashed with this synthetic concrete, essentially. What are the rest of you folks doing? Well, I think our instructions are perfectly clear. Let's stand next to the door. And then he goes, is there, there is a door. Yes, is there it? is a door. Yeah. Yes. I will stand next to it. And okay. Uh, stock still we're awaiting further instructions fantastic so you see valance sort of wander over completely naked apart from the pixelized areas of of um beach body <laughs> conveniently centered and you stand by the door fantastic mm. bridget is gonna stand around and look like look around there would be like hello lady it's so are you okay you can continue speaking if you want but if not that's okay <laughs> Uh, there is silence. <laughs> Jeff remains standing precisely where he was when this disaster occurred, and he's staring pointedly at Scrubbot with a single tear making its way down the side of his face. <laughs> yes, if Scrubbot could feel any emotions above the current pain it's having, it would notice it and appreciate it. What about you, Frog? What are you, what are you doing at this moment? So this explosion that happens, I want to see if I can find out what happened. How, how would you do this? So you're in the room currently. You see these other four individuals have gone. Um, one person is currently following what the, the words. Everyone else has sort of just stood around, sort of like doing their own thing. So how are you going to find out what the uh, what the explosion is or where it's come? So I assume it's uh, brains and something. I'm not sure what brains and science. Sure. Um, yeah, make brains and science roll. So yeah, so add those to the stat and the skill together, and that will be the number of dice plus one computer dice. And five and six, five and sixes are successes. And let us know if you get a six on the computer dice. Um, I got zero successes. <laughs> Nothing. So you you sort of stand there. And you go. We must find out what is going on. But you don't do anything because you're waiting for somebody <laughs> else to do. I think you know you know that the explosion happened outside the room, and the way the room shook, you can reasonably work out it's quite far away from it. So there's no immediate danger to where you are. But it's still disconcerting. You may, you don't know exactly you know what it was, or you know if people the, the alarms cut out. So now it's eerily quiet, except for the screaming from Scrubbot currently. Oh, for Scrubbot, um, I'm going to go stand by. Uh, I forgot what Arthur's character was called. Valis. Okay, so Frog and Valis are by the door. The door opens almost into you both. <laughs> And uh, a woman comes in. Her name sort of floods above her, and you can see she's called Roz R H Y T two. Her eyes are focused on something sort of in front of her that you, none of you can see. Uh, her red jumpsuit matches her hair, and a memory all of you uh, have never accessed before sort of tells you that she is red level, and that you are infrared, which means that she is one level of security clearance above you, and she can tell you what to do. She does. She says, get dressed, clones. Alpha Complex needs you. We've had a full-on traitor attack on the lowest level of the nearby sector, and it's all hands to the pump. Uh, well, you don't need the rest of the briefing. That's totally fine. Uh, if you need anything to look up, just look up an Alphapedia. That would be great uh, for your cerebral cortex. Everyone's got the CC running. You can all see my name. She sort of points above her head, and you all can. Bridget is squinting a lot, but yeah, she can. Yeah, if anything, you stop squinting and then it's like enhance, enhance, and your eyes suddenly like, what? It's very in focus <laughs> at that point. But it does take, maybe it takes you a little bit longer to uh, to get done. Right, great. Well, it looks like your cerebral cortex is, you know, it's working. That's your link to friend computer. So, you know, information, directions, mission updates, XP points, holovid, the rest you can get from there. It's all beamed straight to the eyeball display. Anything else you need to know, you need to sub-vocalize it. The computer can see and hear everything that you can, so you don't need to describe anything. The computer already knows. Okay, look, just grab. Uh, she sort of looks, and so she sees Scrubbot, and she goes, oh, for goodness sake. Okay, your first job, troubleshooters, is to grab that thing, and she points at Scrubbot. He needs to get repaired. Uh, we'll take it down to technical services. And she opens, like, she sort of puts her hand on a panel next to her, and the, a, a hidden door sort of opens, and you can see in a sort of like closet, there are five mops. Escort that scrub bot down to technical services, the depot that's just down the corridor. Make sure, sure nothing else happens to it. Don't screw this up. Alpha Complex needs a lot of scrubbing just now. You'll get 10 XP each for this. She leaves. Now it's just you, the scrub bot, and some maps. Well, we'd better get a move on then, hadn't we? She's told us what to do. 
And Jeff goes dashing towards Scrubbot and uh, whispering sweet nothings towards it. And uh, by extension, uh, Peter, who is next to it. And he goes, it'll be okay, mate. Don't worry. We're going to take very good care of you. Roll for me, <laughs> Jeff. Roll for me a sprains and psychology check plus computer dice. Okay. Brains and psychology, that's three. So that was four, six, six on those dice. And the computer dice was... Five. Five. Okay, so that's two successes and nothing on the computer dice. That's really good to know. You sort of, you quieten down and Scrubbot uh, is aware of you, like throughout its pain and its small, small existence, it realises it and it dials down its volume slightly. So instead of a high pitch, it's now about 50%. But it is aware of you and it's sort of quietened down a bit, but still going at quite a high rate. That's good. How about we get rid of this nauseous whining? Uh, I would like to try to operate it to try to turn down the knob which i presume exists which just emits screams um perhaps absolutely yes yeah. so uh so for you valence you can sort of wander over there that will be a mechanics operate check i think okay i'll say as well just for the for the rest of you the script bot itself is it is a cleaning robot it's about the size of a suitcase and this sort of chunk has sort of hit it right in the middle. Imagine, um, imagine Hypno Disc from Robot Wars. Yes. Yeah. There you go. I know. That's I know. Some nice. <laughs> of those are old enough to remember that first time around. <laughs> so it looks a bit like that, essentially. So I'm going to add up three plus five if it's mechanics plus operate. If you said it was engineer. Uh, mechanics plus operates. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to roll eight dice plus, plus computer. computer dice. Yep. Okay. Uh, six, six, four. That's why I'm rolling three at a time. So that's mm -hmm. two successes. Hang on. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple more sixes, four successes. Four successes. And then I'm going to roll the two more plus computer. Yep. Um, that's a five. That's another success. So five successes and six on that computer dice. Excellent. All right. So five successes. So looking at it, you can see that Scrubbot, you sort of maybe like take a moment and you press a button and Scrubbot sort of flips over as they all have that sort of mechanic to flip over again, like Robot Wars. And so the synthetic bot does go out of the way. And on the other side of it, you can see there are like for a cleaning bot, many, many cogs and wheels and sort of like, mm -hmm. like sort of danger sort of thing. Like you're like, oh, not, not so good. But you, you're not hurt by it. You take a step back. However... Because you rolled a six on the computer dice. First of all, you lose one moxie point straight away. Excellent. Ideal. Your eyeball display, your core cortex, suddenly blurs. And you just see a warning. It goes, danger, danger. There's danger here. And it sort of blurs the whole thing where Scribbot was. It's almost like a like a you know, a certain filter that we might see in certain films or the blurred background. You can see it's still there, but it's like it's all encompassing to the point where you can't really see it's all very big and fuzzy so currently you cannot see uh where scrubbot is or like be able to help with with scrubbot you unless you look away that's the only time mm. you can actually help with scrubbot stuff from now on oh my it appears i wasn't actually meant to interact with scrubbot my mistake <laughs> what do you mean man it appears to be dangerous i might uh, want to get uh, uh, i'd get away from it if i were you but he needs your help man surely you can do something <laughs> scrubbot now that you have you have sort of pressed that button it sort of flipped itself over it is sort of there and as it's slowly starting to make it like trundle its way out of the corner because it couldn't do so before it's making huge gashes in the tiles and making that like nails on a chalkboard it is slowly getting there but it does feel much like um uh, the weakest of the pack like help me <laughs> like as it's moving along at a very <laughs> slow pace like i said it's about the size of a suitcase and you think if you're going to try and get this creature down to um technical services it's going to take a long time what i can't see it i could try to direct uh, someone to perform the uh, relevant operations you can help someone to do that so that will be a plus one to somebody else's pool jeff frog what are you guys doing well jeff is he's very aware of his limitations He's no robot surgeon. At best, he can give it a, an encouraging word, which he's already done. Yes. And he has now reached the limit of his ability. <laughs> You've reached the limit of your empathy, and you're like, well, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Frog? Frog has many bad memories of all the um, mistakes she's made when it comes to operating on robots, and she's going to stay the hell away from this. <laughs> she fucks it up even more. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, Peter is still a little confused from the whole being cloned thing. Mm -hmm. Would it be worse if they were found still naked when they were told to get dressed, or would it be worse if they didn't get 
the um, cleaning robot down quickly. Interesting. I want you to make for me a brains bureaucracy check. So that is one. So I roll one normal dice and one computer dice. Is that yes. Correct? And actually, I forgot to say this when we were setting up as well. So we'll do that in a second. If at any point your pool is completely negative for your dice thing, you will still roll that number of dice. But any uh, non-success, so one, two, three, or four, counts against any successes. So basically, try not to ever have negative pools of dice when rolling. But you're okay, because you've got oh, one good. plus computer dice. Perfect. Oh dear. That is a two and a three. So two and a three. Um, it's interesting, because you do know that, obviously, Roz, who came in, she was wearing a red thing, and she told you to get dressed. But then she told you another directive as well. She didn't say what order to get it done in. Peter will take that as a as a tacit uh, acceptance of his plan, and he's going to run over and grab one of the the boiler suits he saw hanging on the wall, and try and scoop up the poor babby um, cleaning bot um, <laughs> in it and wrap it up and <laughs> okay. try and use it as a knapsack. Oh my god, really? <laughs> okay, um, it's quite heavy. Like you, you can as you're putting it down, like it will get onto the like if you put it down, it will sort of crawl very closely onto it. Mm-hmm. You can see this the, the blades and stuff are still spinning, so it starts to cut the material quite a bit, but then it will stop, like, knowing what you're trying to do. But it's very heavy. You don't think you could put it on your back, per se, but what you could do, perhaps, is have two of you carry it, almost like uh, throne style, which might get you there a little bit quicker. He'll probably look over at, um, at Lego Man. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> would, would you mind, sir? You you look rather rather strong. It's no bother, pal. Yeah, I'll help you carry it. Don't worry. I'll help Excellent. you get the little body down to the down to the robot surgery. Between you both, I'd say, like you sort of that, and with Valance sort of directing you from the corner of their eye, yeah, you can yeah. easily sort of start to make your way down. Uh, what's Bridget doing? She is very slowly putting on her red jumpsuit th- throughout all of this, like trying to work out which hole goes where. And it's um, like initially she puts it on the wrong way up, then she puts it um, on inside out. Yep. And then she figures out the right way and then zips it halfway up and then it gets stuck. It gets and stuck. Then she just... yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those awkward bun- jump- jumpsuits which has like buttons and a zip. Like, oh, who does that? It is black, though. It's not red. I'll, I'll oh, say yeah, that. Just, yeah. so, just so you know, um, that's, kind of, that's kind of important in this one. All right. So currently, there's one of you wearing a jumpsuit. Two oh. of you carrying <laughs> carrying <laughs> Scrubbot using a jumpsuit, but still naked. <laughs> Frog Valance, are you going to put on a jumpsuit, or are you just going to just keep going? I'll put one on. Yeah, I'll put one on. All right, cool. But just uh, like struggling with hers and be like, oh my, I hope if I, I can return this to the star. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, they're all, it's really awkward. They're all unisex size. So instantly they don't fit anybody as a result. <laughs> Jeff, Peter, there is only one jumpsuit left because one of them is being used for Scrubbot. We need to get Scrubbot to surgery soon. Uh, we, we don't have time to put a jumpsuit on, or at least Jeff doesn't. No, no, P- Peter is, is, is already sacrificing his modesty. Well, no, I guess he's got the he's got the pixels to take care of him. But he <laughs> would have sacrificed his modesty if it, if it had been on the table for, for Scrubbot. And we're trying to save a life here. Yeah, oh no, I, I'm just... So we're just <laughs> leaving a perfectly good black jumpsuit on a peg. Just Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll turn around to who, whoever of my companions other than Pizza is nearby and say, um, Hey, um, Hugh, while you're not carrying anything, you wouldn't mind picking up my jumpsuit and uh, bringing it with you, would you? Of course, no worries, pal. Oh, cheers, you're the star, mate. So you are about to leave with Scrubber and Tow. The door is about to open and it stops and you just hear in your mind, and it's also subtitled in your eyeball display, Congratulations on joining Alpha Complex Workforce Citizens. Please accept one XP point each as a bonus. XP points can be spent on necessities or luxuries, including increasing your security level. Before you leave the briefing room, ask yourself the following three questions. One, do I have all my equipment with me? Two, do I know where I'm going? Four, do I know what to do when I get there? Six, do any of the people around me look like traitors or other forms of mutants? If the answer to these questions is no, or in some cases, yes, then ask your mission briefing operative for clarification. Good luck with your mission, citizens, and have an alpha day. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Do you have a smint? 
Silence. <laughs> if we recorded it and music ends, it's very much like Ryan Air. It's like a bah, 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 which takes you all off guard. The door opens, and then just about as you're about to step out, another pop up comes up. He goes, Citizens, please recall that all issued equipment is your responsibility, and there will be penalties for not taking care of any material assigned to you. If you leave equipment in your room, it may fall into the hands of traitors. You turn around. And there's still the broom closet with five mops in it. Um, I think Peter will look with a sort of a, a, a facial expression of pure terror on his face between the, the struggling form of cleaning bot and the brooms and sort of back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> yeah, his beard wafting. <laughs> you, you, you've got this, Peter? We're, we, 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 we've got, we, we, we're, we're, we're trying to keep this robot alive. I need you to stay with your, with your mind focused on keeping this thing, keeping this thing up. But Jeff... The brooms. What about the brooms? And Bridget is like, oh, oh my, I, I don't like the sound of traders. That would be bad, wouldn't it? And then she's going to shuffle over to where the mops are and carry all five of them. All five of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, Valence Frog, are you going to help at all or are you going to leave them? Um, give me two of those. And I, I rush forwards, looking very, um, my eyes bulging. <laughs> I demand you to give me two. Bridget is very startled and is very startled and gives you one very slowly at a time. <laughs> another one. I demand another. There you go. And I grab those two and I look like I'm about to dual wield two broomsticks for yeah. any threat that comes browning down at us. Isn't this wonderful to see everyone working to further the aims of friend computer? I will also say, Valence, you still have the blur happening as well. Yeah. So you, when you look away, you can see the mops. But then if you look anywhere near your companions who are holding the script bot, uh, you just see a big blur and like, warning, 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 like really big. <laughs> Don't go near this thing. <laughs> Caution is advised. And not to worry you, obviously. Uh, the, the computer is telling me it is quite dangerous. However, it's probably just being cautious. Uh, but do keep sure it's about you. <laughs> Thanks for your concern, Valence. That's very kind of you to have to be thinking about my and Peter's well-being. Anytime. Remember to bend your knees, not your back. That's very important. That's good advice. As you say that, you can you suddenly get like a uh, balance. You suddenly get like a video of of like how to bend. <laughs> yeah. Like, off as like, like a gif that comes up because you yeah. sort of sub vocalized it as well. Yeah. You have your mops. You have the script bot, who is again like I, I think about like like a, I I would say almost like a trunky suitcase, which is a very UK reference. I know of Dragon's Den, um, <laughs> but it's very heavy, as if someone has stuffed a lot of stuff into it with whirling cogs and and spinning blades on it. But it it has like script bot is aware because you did do that amazing check before jeff it's trying to relax but it's, it's still in a lot of pain so you slowly sort of make your way out of the room as you leave the room your cerebral cortex come up again for all of you and a large yellow arrow appears in the air in front of you indicating that you turn left down the corridor unfortunately you can't see much of the corridor as it is obscured by the arrow like it's almost as if it's there within like an inch of your face pointing in that direction into to left well keep on then peter there's no need to slow down friend computer showing us where to take his little servant here i, I think peter will, will stop trying to clean his grafted on glasses for a second and then and sort of nod in in, in enthused um, agreement don't worry little buddy you're going to be all right it's sort of screeching at the top of it. So. <laughs> As you go down the corridor at left, and the thing is, so the arrow sort of moves a bit. Imagine again the old fashioned windows maze sit screensaver as it sort of moves back again you still can't see too far in front of it as you're leaving the room though suddenly sirens blare and another large pop-up appears in front of your field of vision alerting you to the wanted uh, traitor was named the not dead be careful it says he may be after your mops exclamation mark exclamation mark oh no and then i clutch all my mops in my chest <laughs> totally with the arrow and the pop-up and the blur, I think uh, Valis is quite blind <laughs> at yeah. this point. It's like he's gone on a website in the 90s and there were too many things. Yeah, you're trying, you're up. desperately trying to close it with your eyes <laughs> and it's not working. <laughs> Which X button is the proper one I should click? I don't know. <laughs> well, you, you guys are going to have to keep a good grip on those mops. Otherwise, this traitor wasp name might get them. But I think you've got it. I think you can keep us safe while we get, uh, while we get mop bot down to the uh, surgery. You've got this, everyone. Let's just keep moving. I, I just want to add my voice to Jeff's. Um, I think you're doing a, a great job, and I, I oh. totally believe in you. Thanks so much um, for the support, Peter. And it, I just want to make sure you feel heard, Jeff, and, and I'm, I'm right behind you, and in this case, beside you. 
Uh, Frog, what are you? What are you doing? You've got two mops yourself. Uh, um, are they now? What the tracer looks at my mops? I like look around me wildly. I'm like, no one's taking my mops. My mops. My precious mops. The pop up itself is blocking most of your sight, but around the edges, all five of you see suddenly a person in a black uniform, very much like yours, sprinting down the corridor towards you. They look terrified. There are five gold stars floating in the air above their head, where most people have their names. What do you do? Oh, hello. You, you shouldn't run in, in corridors. You should know better, young man. I violate safety procedure. Do we know what the five stars mean? You don't currently know. But you could hazard a quick guess that it's probably not a good thing. I thought we weren't allowed to have expletives for names. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pal, where are you running off to? So, so, so Jeff is going to try and talk. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? I'm going to say, I'm going to count down from five, and you all have got to have done something, so I'm going to say five. I'm going to stand between him and, and Scrubbot, still clutching it behind me. All right. Uh, I'm going to thrust them up forward and be like, halt! I demand you stop. I'm going to right. put on my, the second jumpsuit I'm carrying. <laughs> 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 In case of danger, two, be- two jumpsuits are better than one. So this person running sees a bewildering <laughs> display of activity <laughs> in front of them. Bridget is flattening herself against the wall to avoid Perfect. being knocked over. Fantastic. Yes, because that is exactly what happens. This person, was the name, just barrels straight into you folks. First, it was like talking to them. They're getting out of the way. I think everyone needs to make for me a, a violence athletics check and let me know what you get. Three successes for Peter. No successes and nothing on the computer dice either. One six on the computer dice for me. <laughs> Another <laughs> <Again>. one. <laughs> they really just love talking to me. I mean, we're best buddies. All right. One success and nothing on the computer dice. One success and nothing on the computer dice. So, Valance, <laughs> so it's quite funny. You're trying to put on the jumpsuit. Um, you get a very helpful how to button up your jumpsuit uh, sort of um, wiki that comes up with animated videos and a horrible sort of oh, music yeah. type thing. So you're just like, ah, <laughs> desperately <laughs> trying to put up your sort of jumpsuit. With those roles, so there's enough successes. So because of the confusion and stuff, what's the name just sort of barrels into you, falls on the floor, trips. And there was there was someone with no successes. It was Jeff, wasn't it? No successes. It was me. So Jeff, you drop your part of... No! (laughs) (laughs) Jeff, how could you? He trusted you. I very dramatically cry out as I fall. Uh, Oh, absolutely. Imagine it's a slow motion. It's almost like classical music playing at this point. (laughs) You see, what's the name? So barrel passed you through the pop-up, hitting into uh, Frog and all that stuff. Falls down. I think with, I think as well with uh, Frog, like it just gets tangled up in you and manages to grab on the mops because you wrench it back it snaps in half as as it falls <gasps> on the ground jeff you're like no and you drop and you're like scrubbot mm. scrubbot falls on top of what's the name and there's oh. a sudden horrible sort of <laughs> all of your fields of vision go blurry <laughs> As it's like, danger, danger, <laughs> terrifying visuals in process. Everyone loses one moxie point as you just hear a horrible mixture of screaming. Um, you hear squelching noises as Scrubbot is panicking slightly and eventually it sort of calms down and you just sort of, again, blink a bit. And at this point, Valentine says, well, your, your stuff goes away as well. So you're, you're okay now. You, you, you manage to get rid of all the pop-ups. Mm-hmm. You turn off the blur filter and you all see the remains of a black jumpsuit, Scrubbot on top covered in a red like sort of liquid with some legs pointed underneath a bit like wizard of oz evil witch style and there is silence and you just see the stars on top of the this traitor blink and then slowly just go as they all sort of disappear if anyone needs to talk about what's just happened i just want you to know i'm here for you i'm here to listen and not to judge and also, if anyone has any wet wipes that I can use to clean my face, <laughs> that would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, Peter, unfortunately, you did get a full... <laughs> you are, your front part is covered, essentially, with um, the remains of Was the Name. So it's very clear to all of you that Was the Name is very dead, and it is kind of your fault. You hear the sound of sort of like his footsteps and hurry sort of like, this way, this way. And around the corner, you see a squad of troubleshooters thundering past, uh, resplendent in their red armor, laser pistols drawn, and they halt by you guys and the corpse. 
their leader sort of fixes you all with one metallic eye. Which of you is responsible for this? And she points down at what's the name and script bot. Hi, guys. <laughs> she, she, she goes to well, Jeff with, her, with, her, with the pistol. I think it was me. What happened it, here, troubleshooter? Well, you see, I just sort of fell backwards while, while holding up Scrubbot. And, uh, Why are you naked, troubleshooter? We're saving Scrubbot. He, ne- he needs medical attention. Looks down at this blood-stained <laughs> Scrubbot. <laughs> <laughs> He's very sick. Goes to, like, moves over to Peter with the, with the pistol. What happened here, troubleshooter? Well, I think it's it's very important that we we try not to establish any blame or or fault. Goes over to balance. What happened here, troubleshooter? Well, I think there's been a, a big misunderstanding. Really, so you see, it wasn't us. Goes to frog. <laughs> what happened here, troubleshooter? <laughs> I uh, I just uh, quaking, Karen. And then finally goes to what happened here, troubleshooter? Like gun on Bridget, who's like been against the wall this whole time. Well, this man was running very fast through the corridor and. It was all a bit fast, and these fine gentlemen uh, carrying Mr. Bart over here, it slipped, and I think it fell on this man, and I don't think he's doing so good now. After you finish that, there's a pause where all the troubleshooters sort of look eye to eye on each other, and then the, the head troubleshooter, this, uh, this lady in red armor, sort of goes, friend computer, she sort of speaks to the ceiling, and out of the ceiling comes almost like this snake-like sort of um, object, almost like an eye, essentially, with the friend computer symbol on. And it sort of comes down with another sort of microphone. And she says, friend computer, I'm arresting this infrared working party for this unauthorized termination of the notorious fleeing traitor known as what's the name? The computer then interrupts. Congratulations, infrared working party. You have aided Alpha Complex in your selfless act of quick thinking. One less traitor is one more reason to sleep well at night. Each of you receives 500 XP immediately. And then in your field vision, you're like poppers, like proper 90s clip arts. <laughs> yes. This is enough to raise you up to red level. Well done. And there's a moment where all the other sort of red troubleshooters is like, oh. And then they start to awkwardly sort of... Wow. <laughs> Jeff waves at his adoring fans and says, uh, well, thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks very much. However, computer interrupts. Sensory feedback indicates the destruction of valuable Alpha Complex equipment, specifically a revised standard mop. And you all turn to Frog, who's clutching a very broken one of the mops. Every working party, each of you will have five XP points deducted as a lesson in taking care of valuable items in your care. And instantly, all of your XP points goes below 500, so you're back to infrared <laughs> as a result. <laughs> However, in recognition of your abilities, you have been reassigned to a new mission where there will be less chance of you damaging our equipment. Await new briefing details. Thank you, and have an alpha day. And the sort of computer goes back up into the ceiling. And obviously this other red team sort of just... <laughs> stops clapping. Sorry for the confusion. Peter's going to go over to Frog um, and just sort of quite quietly take her aside and say, uh, Frog, I, I know you didn't mean to do it. I know it was a mistake. But I can't go back to jail. (laughs) (laughs) Don't fuck up again. This wasn't my fuck up, and I guessed her at um, Jeff. Like, he snapped it. It wasn't me, I swear. (laughs) No, no, that's quite all right. It was my fault. I shouldn't have fallen backwards on you while carrying this robot. I'm incredibly sorry, Frog. I'm more than happy to accept any blame. Oh, it's all right. (laughs) Um, No, no, no. You're not at fault here. It's me. Blame accepted. I'm very sorry. And I, I reach up, like, placatingly from the floor. <laughs> I, I'll do better in future. So, Jeff, you're saying it's my fault out, it out is. loud, right? Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, down from the ceiling comes this other thing as, Troubleshooter Jeff, did I just hear a report of fault here? I'm afraid you did. Please, Please tell, tell me the nature of this fault. fault. And the computer comes in very close to you. A mop has been damaged. Oh yes, we've dealt with punishment to all of your party and you are all responsible for it. Are you saying one person is more responsible than the others? I would like to take responsibility for the broken mop. There's silence (laughs) from the red troubleshooters who are now backing away very slowly from you. (laughs) Troubleshooter Jeff, are you admitting that you deliberately broke and issued mop equipment to you? I'm admitting that I broke it, yes. I'm afraid it was me. I fell backwards onto it. Admitting your guilt is a big thing to do, troubleshooter. For this one, you get one. And from the machine itself, there's almost like a little 
like ticker tape comes out and you get a card that says you are number as backwards but it says you are number one troubleshooter take this you will be the authoritative one here thank you troubleshooter jeff for your initiative. thank you friend computer you all see this by the way this little like little sticky thing it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen <laughs> you see everyone honesty is the best policy we all need to take ownership of our actions i stand up in my pixelated naked glory and yep. put my hands on my hips authoritatively and say well as the leader of this infrared working group i say we wait here for further instructions as the computer told us jeff uh- <laughs> I, I, I want to congratulate you on, on your being assigned number one. That's great. Um, Thanks, I think, mate. I, I think that's that's brilliant for you. You should be totally proud of your I team. Am. I am. I just wonder if, as someone who, who admitted their their uh, inability to look after uh, issued property property properly, uh, perhaps you'd like to, to give that to me to look after so that whenever you need it, I can give it back to you uh, and it, we can be sure it'll be in, in pristine condition. It's, it's I'd have to yes. check with the computer. I don't think I have the authorization to make that sort of call, I'm afraid, Peter. It's, it's, I see the belongs. logic and I, I, I accept what you're saying. It makes a lot of sense, but... Well, well, you know, maybe you could use your, your number one uh, troubleshooter to ask the computer if you could give it to me. You know, maybe that, maybe that would be a, a good idea for everyone involved. I, I look at the other members of the work party. Are the, are the red people still here? They are slowly leaving. Because they're sort of like, we're done here. So they're sort of true. You see the leader look back at you and it's like... Oh. I give him a wave and say, bye guys, as they're walking away. She just goes, oh, and carries on walking. In the meantime, though, so uh, Scrubbot is obviously sort of there in the middle of you all looking very sorry for itself. And out of one of the hatches uh, nearby, a much larger scrubbot comes in and starts to make itself busy, slowly but surely cleaning up the corpse of what's the name? <laughs> like, <laughs> like in the background, I'll say. I, I'll say you've moved a little bit away so you're not in danger of this large scrubbot, but it's like slowly getting towards um, it's, it's finishing up the corpse, essentially cleaning it up. Yeah, I think I uh, reach a hand out and put it on your shoulder, Peter. And I say, um, I really do thank you for your concern, but the computer has given me this great honor. If I am to make any other missteps, then you, of course, can have the card. Yet for now, I think I should keep hold of it. Thank you, though, Peter. I really mean that. And I, like, you know, squeeze your shoulder and give you, like, a, a friendly smile. As always, Jeff, a, a wise and considered response. Oh, thanks, mates. What are the rest of you doing? Obviously, you've seen, you've all three, all, the rest of you have seen this exchange as well that uh, Jeff has been g- gifted you are number one troubleshooter card from Friend Computer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Valance, could I have my, uh, my bodysuit, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, yes, of course. Thanks for looking after it, buddy. Don't worry about the blood. Oh, no, I know. It wasn't your fault. That was... And I point at the larger bot cleaning up the bloodstain. <laughs> and I... Oh, yeah. And that was, um... That. Now everyone will know what you did. Exactly. All right. What about, what about Bridget and Frog? What are you guys doing? What, what do you make of the situation? Um, I think Bridget was about to start to use her initiative to use a mop to clear up some of the blood, and then just the giant one came and swept it all up. So it was like... She's like, I don't know what to do now. And, um... She's uh, looking around to see if there's anyone else going to come and give instructions, because otherwise, otherwise he's quite quite a bit lost, I think. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, you can see, like, Bridget, because you're quite close to Scrubbot, just, uh, the biggest Scrubbot just now, you can see it's sort of the way it sort of sucks in creatures. It sucks in the, the body, it sucks in the broken broom, and before any of you have a chance to react to it, it sucks in the small Scrubbot, and you just hear this... <laughs> as it sort of gets sucked in, and then you just hear a... No. As it sort of... <laughs> finishes up and then continues like ding and carries on cleaning up and like it looks like there's been no the only reason you would know that something's happened in this corridor is because there's a ma- massive sort of impact where smaller scrub uh, impacted uh, wasn't it but otherwise it's beautifully clean and you just see this large scrub box just go past like whoop, oh, oh no uh, you uh, should give it you spit him back out young man <laughs> and then you see wax the large scrub box with a broom like okay <laughs> yeah yeah no that's a, a violence melee please for me please um Violence to melee minus five. So um, that will be three in t- uh, th- uh, three in total plus yeah. a uh, computer dice. Let me know all your results for this one. 
one, one, five, and six for the computer dice. Oh, so that's so unfortunate because that obviously the one and one cancels out the five and six, but you do get so that's a, a, a zero on the <laughs> on your success. So you whack the back of Scrabot. Thankfully, it's a net zero, so like you don't damage the mop or Scrabot, but there's like a because you've got six of dice. So suddenly, there's like a as the com- friend computer comes down and goes, uh, troubleshooter Bridget. Did we just see catch you hitting and almost damaging one of our prized equipment? Yes, he was being very rude. He ate the smaller, Mr. Bat. I'm sorry, did I make a mistake? Indeed you did, Troubleshooter Bridget. Large Scrubbot was mainly cleaning up the scene, taking all the debris with it, including small Scrubbot. Do you have violent tendencies towards Scrubbots? I don't think so. I'm very sorry. You, you, don't, seem to, you don't seem to be sure, Troubleshooter Bridget. It gets closer and closer. I... I, no. Hmm. Well, Troubleshooter Bridget, please refrain from damaging other scrubbots. And then it prints out uh, like a little thing and sticks it to the wall and it has a picture of your face on it that's saying, warning, do not let this woman near (laughs) scrubbots. Ah, you know what? Because you did damage property. Above your head, your name disappears and one star comes up over the top. Troubleshooter Bridget, you may have, uh, may have been a faux pas, but until that, until a point a uh, friend computer sees fit, you have a treason star. That means other troubleshooters will see you and view you suspiciously. So you must be careful and not to accumulate more stars, because the more stars you get, well, wouldn't want that, would we? Oh, no. Do you have a smint? <laughs> <laughs> the computer slowly goes back into the top. Peter? Can I talk to you quietly for a moment? Of course, Jess. I'm, I'm always here if you need a, a friendly shoulder. I'm or, a little worried, a, a little worried about Bridget, and I, I, I really think that she could benefit from some heart-to-heart conversation with, well, I think the person with the the biggest heart in the group, and I think that's you, Peter. Well, I'm, 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 I'm gratified and and elated that you would think that that I fill that role. Um, However, I had thoughts on a similar vein, mainly that that we got 500 XP for killing that five-star person. (laughs) And I see that Bridget has has one star. And I I just wonder if, for the benefit of the group, of course, not not for my own personal (laughs) gratification or advancement, Mm. but for the good of the group, if we were to to kill her, maybe we advance into the red group I turn out of the huddle and look at Bridget out the corner of my eye. Yeah, you see uh, Bridget sort of standing there looking very scared with a mop clutched in her hand with one star flashing above the top of her head. Now that is an interesting proposition, Peter. She, Bridget, has been such a kind and generous person up to now, but perhaps it's all been an act. You saw how she lashed out at that scrub bot. Oh, oh, indeed. I, I'm, I'm well aware of how the most violent personalities can hide behind seemingly innocuous old women. And that's incredibly dangerous. Uh, Frog, Frog, could you, could you join our huddle, please? Um, uh, uh, yeah, what all over. Uh, uh, Bridget, just remain where you are. It's nice to see a group of people become friends. You know? <laughs> um, Valance, um, yeah. why don't you uh, uh, take the mop from Bridget quickly, uh, just so the computer doesn't... Uh, well, you, you saw what she just did. Of course. I, I turn to Frog and say, um, now, I've just been uh, taking counsel here with friendly Peter, and we feel that it would be in the best interests of the group to... Well, Bridget is a traitor. She's treasonous. Well, I am incredibly loyal to our friendly computer. I'm glad to hear that. We're all very loyal to friend computer here. Very, and the only very. person who doesn't appear to be <laughs> is Bridget. And I can't help but notice that she has attacked one of his robots. As the, the lead member of this working party, I'd like to nominate you, Frog, as, well... <clears throat> and so I like more. fiddle awkwardly <laughs> with my hands. I'm like, hey, Bridget, look over there, a traitor. Oh, no. <laughs> and as she turns around, I'm yeah. going to use my mop as a javelin and try yeah. and one-shot her. <laughs> Perfect. Um, because my throw is plus five. Um, yep. Uh, violence plus throw. Yes, go for it. And there'll be plus one for computer dice as well. Oh, of course. Uh, oh, that's a six on the computer dice. And that, there is one other success um, on there as well. 
what I'd say is that you do manage to hit Bridget. So Bridget, you are now hurt. So if you type that on your thing, that means you will have a minus one to all of your dice pools. <laughs> you just suddenly get like not you won't be get speared per se, but you definitely get a big whack on the head, and you're like, oh! But there is a computer uh, dice <laughs> suddenly <laughs> comes down. It's like uh, troubleshooter frog. frog. What, what is the meaning? You seem to be attacking your fellow troubleshooter bridges. What is the meaning of this? Computer turns around. Is this true, troubleshooter bridges? Are you a traitor? I haven't seen any traders around here. There was one, but I think he died. Turns back to Frog. Troubleshooter Frog, are you 100% sure that Troubleshooter Bridget is a traitor? Our leader, and I guess Jeff, was 100% sure and he instructed me to dispose of said traitor. And as a loyal, as a, a loyal um, Alpha Complex member, incredibly loyal to the friend computer, I, I, without hesitation, I did as requested. Understood. From a safe distance, of course. Thank, Thank you, Troubleshooter Frog. Frog. Jeff, you hear, you feel a tap on your shoulder. And you mm-hmm. look, there is a hand, like one of those sort of um, telescopic hands that sort of comes out the wall, plucks out of your pocket the you are number one troubleshooter, oh. goes around you, gives it to Frog. Bridget. I clap. The floor around you, the tile around you, starts to buzz. And as you look down, it gives way. And you just... <laughs> disappear and the floor closes back up um. <laughs> very good work frog excellent i I'm, I'm really happy with that thank you i don't deserve this there is a, a sudden sort of like noise as you see maybe on the you see sort of like various things happen like on your eyeball display like your hud system essentially as bridget's <laughs> bridget's uh in first question mark one is sort of scrubbed out and then another one appears at Bridget in for question mark two. And a door pings next to you. Yes. And Bridget appears back, looking a bit bedraggled slightly. What I would say, uh, no murderous intentions, if you had any. <laughs> you are reset, thanks to friend computer, but you are back, seemingly cleansed of all your traitorness. Hey, Bridget, how are you doing? You feeling better? Hi, I'm feeling great, thank you. I'm really pleased to hear that. You do have you do have all of your memories, Bridget. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> your cle- basically your cleanse of all your cleanse of all your sort of any hatred or anything traitorous is cleansed, but you aren't cleansed of the mission briefing or any memories or anything like that. From around the corner, Rose are HYT two reappears. You can recognise her because of her red hair and red jumpsuit. She's sort of like oh, looking very cross. She comes around. Oh, I suppose you all think you're clever, do you? This sector is in crisis and you go around interrupting the work of troubleshooters and friend computer. Well, I am not impressed. Plus, oh, you've been reassigned, so effectively immediately. It says here you've got to go to section HOY, H-O-Y, where you must find a plug, unplug it and plug it back in. Don't ask me questions. I know as much as you do. Cerebral Cortec will guide you. Just keep a hold of the mops. And it's, uh, she sort of looks through the mission briefing. It goes... Um, it's a 150 XP point mission, and a uh, oh great. Apparently, I'm coming too to make sure you don't mess around. Oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> really glad you could be with us. We we totally appreciate the, the time and effort you've you've put into coming with us to to babysit. It it really means a lot. She completely ignores both of you against the frog, <laughs> and I pat Peter on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, troubleshooter frog. Yes. Come with me. Uh, right. uh, I'm going to grab my mop first. I need remaining mops. And I'd say as well, Bridget, you'll still have your mops as well that mm. you had as well. What's Valence doing before we sort of shift the scene? At the mention of plugging and unplugging, it brings back memories of whether they're shooter memories or not. He's not sure, but he does have several operational manual, like, uh, manuals memorized. And mm-hmm. this completely makes sense to him. Turning it off and on again is obviously the first thing you do. But quite obviously, they go to me. Um... I, I have full operational knowledge of many computational systems. He'll drone on for quite a while. And says, so, well, the first safeguard procedure is indeed turning off and on the machine again, turning off and on the machine again. The next stages are, and then he keeps on, he keeps going wheels as, off. Yeah, as yes, the computer, as, as, as you sort of move down into the corridor. Absolutely. A notification pops up in all of your heads, uh, directing you to the nearest production, logistics, and commissionary uh, depot. This sort of yellow arrow is quite big, again, in your face. And Roz, eventually, after maybe about five minutes of you walking into walls and corridors, eventually shows you how to go to settings, uh, decrease accessibility and all that sort of thing. So it's a nice little arrow at the top of your HUD. 
the production and logistics commissionary turns out to be just next door uh, to the technical services department where you're supposed to deliver a scrub bot earlier. The PLC, your core tech sort of tells you, is where you pick up mission critical equipment. There's a bored sort of looking technician who looks up at all of you and is like, oh, infrared working party for to section hoy? Mm, okay. And starts pulling out um, equipment. Uh, the technician sort of hands over the equipment slowly to Roz, sort of ticking off each one on a checklist. And is like, mm, uh, crowbar, last one was an hour ago, so can't have that. Breathing apparatus, we're all out of those. Jetpack, she, he sort of looks up at Roz and gives a long suffering look. No. Um, scrub bot, well, we're supposed to have one of those come through here a little while ago, but there's been some sort of hitch, apparently, according to the thing. So, um, But you've got mops, so that will do. So the technician will hand over four items. One, that's a bodysuit which increases the wearer's defense by two, uh, makes hy hydraulic noises, which is always good. Uh, you have got a medikit, three medikits, a grappling gun, or grapple gun, and a megaphone to make yourselves heard. Roz instantly takes the megaphone. She has that and straps that to the side. She says, here you are, and gives you the other three. Who is taking what? Well, as leader, I think I should decide who takes what. Agreed? Yeah, I, I, I cringe away from Ros and defer to, um, yeah, to Frog. I'm 100% behind you, Frog, on this, and I, I think your decisions are going to be perfect, and I, I'm not one to put myself forwards. However, I would just like to point out, I am still naked, and, and that body armor would would rather help me to, to regain some of my, um, my, my confidence. Um, I look at his naked body. Um, Jeff, Jeff is also naked, right? Or is it just... just I Peter? requested my jumpsuit yeah, back I, I did from return uh, it, Valor. So. You did return it from Valor. So it okay, is, so yeah. yeah, Peter is currently the only one that is naked. Uh, describe Peter's naked body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is what you think. Uh, with, with the correct pixelization of various parts. Um, yes. Right. If you want it, it's just his head. You could only see his head. The rest of it's completely blurred. How's that? Oh, I thought it was just his, uh, his pixel blurred. <laughs> oh, I just, I, we were messing around with the settings. You like, oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, Peter, does Frog like what she sees currently? Um, well, it, it, I, I wouldn't want to make assumptions as to what Frog likes, um, but he is probably classically quite well built. Oh, we'll see. Okay, well, I, um, I'm not going to give you the body suit. Back. <laughs> um, I will ignore um, Peter and say, right, he wants this this gun up for grabs. I will take it. And I fire a shot on the earth. Oh, um, my word. All right. The grapple gun. It shoots a, a grapple right up into the sky. Useful for climbing, but it goes straight into the top of the, uh, the logistics room. So you have a very sturdy rope in the logistics room. Uh, so that's one shot gone. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but Bridget will reach out for it. Right, I'll toss it over. You guys toss it over it um, <laughs> when it gets all. Um, I'm going to keep the body seat for myself because I'm cowardly and I like the sound of all defense. Yep. And I am going to go to Pete and say, "If your well-built body gets cut up, here are some med kits for you to use." <laughs> but there's only three of them, though. I, I I I just love the fact that you're always thinking about my best interests. That's that <laughs> Thank is you. I try. Totally <laughs> one of, that is your, your one of your best of many qualities. I nod sagely as Frog is uh, putting these out. Rolls is coming behind you with um, a clipboard and it encourages you all to sign it so that all the equipment has been signed for and it's definitely coming out and coming back in. And they give you, uh, Bridget uh, and Valence, depending on who has the grapple gun at this point, they give you an extra shot because you're still in the place and they're like, that one's a freebie. <laughs> and you can see another, like, um, a poor, uh, another infrared who's also working behind the thing comes up and is busily trying to, like, Using using one of their own mops, trying to get um, <laughs> the, the Just grapple it. down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I'll initially go for it, but then see uh, Bridget reaches for it as well and let her. I thank you. I, it was quite a shot back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you remember all of, all of your gun training, which I assume you had. Make make sure it, uh, whether it's loaded or not every time you fire, and even if you're not firing, it, assume it's loaded at all times, and then he, he will like go through. Uh, um, start going through like boring safety procedures, and you can feel free to ignore him or not. Bridget, Bridget's eyes are very glazed over. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. already in screen saver mode. Absolutely. Yeah, I think Jeff is standing there just beaming at everyone and says, uh, Isn't this great? Look at everyone getting on, all ready to do our job. 
this is fantastic. Everyone just living in the moment. <laughs> Peter has already spilled one of the medkits all over the floor and is hurriedly trying to pack it back in. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Okay, well, no, you said it. Um, let's go for a. Are you trying to do this stealthily, or are you trying to? Oh no, he's he's, he's just he's just fumbled around and, and happened to drop everything. <laughs> all right, a brain he's... science check for me, please. See if you can get it back in the in, back it on its place. Get all I the see. stuff for it. And, yeah. and do I automatically get the plus two just for holding it uh, to my brains, or do I just use my base stats? I use your base stats. The, the that plus is for when you're actively using it. Yeah, I think you just you just dropped it, right? That's oh, what's yeah. happened here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. He, he was trying to have a quick look inside, and I know. I understand what you were doing. And I liked it. <laughs> Good attempt, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, one success and one on the computer dice. So yeah, so you manage easily enough to like scoop it all back in and make sure so then like it's not, none of it's broken. There's no little like the different coloured pills and whatnot. They're all fine. So you're like perfect. After you get all your equipment, Ross, like okay, right, I guess. Look, we'll go. Section Hoy is quite far away, so we'll probably have to take the elevator. It just sort of maneuvers you out of the um, production logistics and commissionary depot. And you sort of go down a corridor, and there's a bank of turbo elevators. And you all sort of, she gets you all in, she shuts the door, and you're all very tight together, all very close together. And she puts in H O Y into the thing, and the doors, uh, the elevator suddenly sort of drops, proper haunted mansion style, like whoop, and then goes briefly sideways and then up, and under a breath, Ross is like, yes, yeah, it's, it's meant to do that. Five minutes go by as it sort of continues on this course, then 10 then 15 and it gets to a point where you all realize that you're not entirely sure if you've come to a halt or if the if the elevator's just vibrating it's been about 20 minutes now you've all been in this very enclosed space together what was so like what's to everyone do? doing after they're finished here thinking of how best to serve our friend computer obviously what else you can always brush up on your training manuals uh, and uh, I detail idea. where they can all be found. Um, it's like, Is there one in particular you would recommend? Well, why not the one on elevator uh, safety procedure? Um, and at this point, it might, he might uh, do. He might want to make a check to see, like, um, if it's operating normally, whether they've stopped or not. Um, I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, Brain, uh, blah, 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 mechanics and engineer. I'd, I'd say, let me double check, because engineer is a little bit different. That's when you're actually tampering. Yeah, fair so enough. That's it. No, that's okay. Uh, whilst I look that up, uh, does any, what, what's everyone else thinking of doing? I'm going to call my grandson. <laughs> he has a computer. <laughs> I don't think his computer is like the friend computer. He uses it to watch things like... Neon Genesis Evangelist. <laughs> it's great that he's watching the Bible cartoon. <laughs> and something like Cowboy Pop. I used to watch Cowboy shows. <laughs> Isn't that nice? So I'd, I'd say, uh, to go back to you, Vance, very quickly, uh, engineer is about like building, repairing, jerry-rigging, sabotaging, and modifying a machine. Uh, operate... So you learn how to sort of use like the manual operation of machinery would be better. Okay, um, yep, that makes sense. That's also a better stat. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to go so for that's it. The mechanics operate thing, um, Bridget. So you're just saying this out loud, right? Uh, About yes, your... she's, she's just going. <laughs> cool. No, no, that's good. That's good. Peter's just going to wonder in his head: Is is religion a punishable offence um, under the, the wise guidance of French computer? Interesting. Uh, so you can always uh, you can always sub vocalize it and ask French computer these questions um, as well it, it just it just wants what's best for the group so he's, he's just going to double check with friend computer that everything is, is going well i can't believe you would do this to bridget friend computer is is watching bible shows a, a, a profitable and, and valuable use of, of everyone's time in your head you get a troubleshoot to pizza your request is sent and we'll get back to you you have been held in the queue and you hear a do do, 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 do. <laughs> Valance, apologies. Uh, what, what was it that you got? Yep, I got a grand total of one success out of nine dice, which is excellent. Whoa. That is that's pretty uh, impressive. So you would hazard that elevators do like end, but there's usually like a bing or something like that. Yeah. So you think you're still in motion, but it's very slight. So you're not sure if the if the elevators run down or anything like that. But you think you're you're still moving. Okay. Peter, you get a. You are thirty thousand and three ninety two in the queue. Boo, boo, do, 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 do. An eyelid starts to just twitch ever so slightly. Yep. In Peter's face. After another couple of minutes, the elevator comes to a stop, and he goes bing, 
Sector, hoy. But the doors don't open. I turn and look at Frog. Computer, if I force the doors open, is this an act of treason? Cannot open doors currently due to substance in proximity to doors may cause inconvenience to participants. Certainly wouldn't want any inconvenience. That, that would be very inconvenient. Well, I don't mind a spot of inconvenience if it means getting the job done. So now, we could use the principle of talk here. Now, that's your radius multiplied, but, and it will go off again about physics. Yep, yep, so no worries, perhaps no you could use the broom, indeed, to uh, wedge it open. Looking at the sort of the punching, sort of the way that Roll's put in the, the numbers, you do see there is a door release button, that sort of glowing sort of red... Or we could press the button. <laughs> um, press it. Is Roz doing anything, actually? She stood right in the middle of all of you and has not looked at you at all during this whole thing. It's like that scene in um, Bill Murray in Lost in Translation where everyone's really close together. That's exactly... She's the Bill Murray of this group. Uh, but Valence, I hear you just press the button, did you? I would, yep. I would like to reach over there and press it. You hear ping and the door's open you realize that the elevator has come down about it's halfway between the floor essentially so the floor mm-hmm. is at the top part through the gap you can see that the elevator stops about half a meter or, uh, a meter sorry below a red carpeted floor level well no the, the floor seems to be moving in slow motion a wave of viscous red liquid cascades into the elevator compartment covering you and your troubleshooters up to sort of your waist height It smells of strawberry flavouring. Outside, you sort of peek up and you can see the huge lobby area is awash with it. And the guiding arrow appears, pointing you straight ahead. Your destination, it says, is subsector K15. And you can see other sort of troubleshooters walking around as people in red jumpsuits, people in orange jumpsuits, even the odd green, uh, sort of making their way. But they're all traipsing through, almost sort of like, at this point, probably knee high, this sort of red viscous liquid that's through all of these, these hallways, essentially. And you're all currently covered with it. Bridget is going to lick some of it and go, mmm, yum. You tasting it? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. You taste it. And you instantly know what it is because your uh, eyeball display sort of bleh, bleh, like, takes it up and it says, ah, oh, red dessert topping. And it's has a very sweet and a slightly acidic taste. And it, you, you sort of feel it. And it's very, like, you know, after a while when you've had sort of sweet stuff like on your hands, it starts to get very sticky. So all of your jumpsuits are currently very sticky and very unpleasant with that horrible sweet smell that's everywhere. Is it better or worse than the blood um, that Peter was covered in? At this point, you're now covered in both sides. You're like Ross from Friends having a tan. Um, (laughs) um, You don't know which part of you is blood and which part of you is uh, red dessert topping. You could always lick and find out. Um. (laughs) Peter will refrain from doing so. (laughs) I've made that mistake before. It's quite nice. Well, we might as well get on with it. Well, this elevator is not operating exactly according to procedure, so we should, we should probably evacuate as soon as possible. Rolls goes, well, no, we can't. We need to get get through it, because obviously we've got to go through the mission and stuff. Like, oh, God, I hate new troubleshooters. Look, it's fine. We can just, like, out. It starts to climb up, presumably on Peter's bare shoulders, and she gets herself out and wiggles out. Like, come on, come on, get out, come on. Mm-hmm. Don't have all day. Uh, do we need to roll something to wiggle out? Oh. No, I'd say with enough time, unless you're doing something else in the lift. Don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I climb out. All right, Jeff climbs out. I will offer myself up as, as a human stem <laughs> to allow everyone to exit. <laughs> <laughs> easy enough, easy enough. Will the infrared working party make it to Sector Hoy and complete their mission to find a plug, unplug it, and plug it back in? Find out next time on What Am I Rolling? The What Am I Rolling podcast was created, recorded, and edited by me, Fiona Howitt. This episode's players were Tim, Alistair, Ben, Josh, and Kylie from Dunking on the DM, where comedy and storytelling collide in one actual play tabletop roleplay podcast. This episode's RPG was Paranoia Red Clearance Edition, published by Mongoose Publishing. You can find out more about Paranoia and get your own copy of the current version on the Mongoose Publishing website. That's mongoosepublishing.com. The theme music was 8-Bit March by Twin Musicon of twinmusicon.org, licensed under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. If you want to find out more about the podcast, check out the website. That's www.wairpodcast.com. Fancy getting in touch? Email the podcast at whatamirollingpodcast at gmail.com. 
Finally, follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at WAIR underscore podcast for latest news on upcoming episodes. And remember, adventurers need not apply.